So let's conclude that you're a little bit cautiously optimistic. Yes, as I said, I'm cautiously optimistic. If you had heroes, who would they be and why would you choose them? I don't really have any role model right now in, in my mind, but I would really call them hero or those who really take the human value seriously, the dignity, who really respect the human dignity and really uh, uh, you know, address the issue of justice in Nepal, I would admire them or I would call them heroes. Um, because the issue of justice is something that really affects Nepal very uh, seriously. Um, people have never felt that the system, the law, protects them equally. Uh, it's always Dalit who has to be in the prison. It's always women who has to face the prosecution. It's always poor people who have to go to prison. Why not a single person who is in power uh, get persecution because uh, simply, be, you know, uh, for, for the crimes that they commit. We haven't seen even a single case where uh, the uh, human rights violators get punished. So I think those who have got to take these people into, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of prosecution or to justice, I would call them hero, and I haven't seen in Nepal uh, any person ha having that got it. But I really, uh, I hope that uh, there will be somebody in future. And what would you say to young Nepalese who are growing up, facing the future? What would you say, how would you say, contribute towards your country? I think it's uh, now youth um, who can contribute, who can really shape uh, the, the future of Nepal. It's us. And I know there are a lot of discriminations against youth as well. Uh, but we should continuously fight for, for our rights. And I myself, uh, I think, uh, uh, would like to, you know, is one example. Uh, for example, um, it was not that easy when uh, I started uh, this advocacy uh, forum. Um, I knew we can make uh, differences, we can make changes. We were the one to really put Nepal at the face of international community. I remember once, it was 2002, when I went to Human Rights uh, Commission's meeting in Geneva. At that time, I was literally shocked to see how little information was available at international uh, community about Nepal. And we had already, in 2002, we already had a state of emergency. Uh, there was no rule of law. Elected prime minister was sacked. A state of emergency was imposed. Uh, uh, human rights violations like extrajudicial executions, forced disappearances were skyrocketing. But people had uh, no knowledge about this. And we really uh, documented and we used to flood this UN system with the cases. So they were forced to really speak about Nepal. And that was the reason why we had largest uh, uh, office of the UN uh, you know, uh, com uh, High Commissioner's Office in, in Nepal. So that also brought in a situation when there was a high voltage conflict going on. That also raised the confidence of uh, human rights defenders in the country uh, so we could really uh, uh, continuously carry on our activities. So we really, uh, through our work, I think we contributed significantly to spark this people's movement. So if we really fight, if we continuously work without giving your hope, you can make a change, you can bring a difference. So, uh, but uh, you have to continuously fight for that, and you should not be pessimistic. You have to uh, be optimistic, and I'm optimistic, because uh, the day will come, and it's the youth who can save the, the, uh, the future. On that note, uh, Mandira, thank you very much for your time, and good luck with your efforts. Thank you very much. It was uh, very good uh, to talk to you about these issues that we have been working on. Thanks.